Hi there everybody, we are today looking at trigonometric graphs. So we're going to look at the sine, the cos and the tan graphs. And when we're talking about the graphs, it's the ones that we, where we plot y against sine x, y against cos x and y against tan x. All right. So in terms of sine x, um, the sine x curve repeats every 360 degrees. All right. So you'll see that in a second. Um, but essentially what we're going to do is going to think about plotting values of x against the values of y. So we could put all the kind of values of x that we would like into it and then press sine of that value and it'll give you an answer and then plotting that on, on a graph, all right? But essentially, it's going to take some time to do that. So what we would really expect to do is learn what these look like and know what these look like. So first thing you need to know is you know it repeats every 360 degrees, all right? It's going to go up and down, up and down, and it's going to be the same every 360. It will have a maximum of a value of 1 and a minimum of value of minus 1. And by all means, if you want to test this with, with, with your calculator, put a sign um, of a number in there, and see what you get and all you're going to get from it is a value which goes between one and minus one all right guarantee all right there's nothing in between okay so sine x starts at zero on the y-axis right in the bottom corner and then from there it basically goes up and down up and down like a wave essentially and this is really, really what your sine graph is is the idea of a kind of a wave function all right so it looks a little bit like this so if i kind of plot the graph i could start at minus 360 and then the reason i've chosen these values is simply because this is where the kind of peaks and troughs and where it crosses the axis, and you'll see that in a second. All right, so minus 360 to 360, but of course you can carry on to 720 because it repeats all the way along. So if I put in my graph um, sine minus 360, and it should give me a value of zero, zero over here, and if I put, and if I repeat, and it should, well, it should go like this, like that, that, and so on, and so on, and so on. You see my curve, and we go like that, and we go like that, and we go like that, and we go like that. All right. So it's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. All right, so you've got values of 1 and minus 1, which I've already mentioned. And then you see from there, it's going to go up and down, up and down. And, of course, it will carry on every 360, so it doesn't stop there. And, of course, it can go into negatives, which I kind of mentioned. So it'll just keep going. Out. And, of course, it'll continue left and it'll continue right, and it'll just continue that way all the way along. All right, so if you're going to put sine 90 in your calculus, you're going to get a value of 1. If you're going to put sine 180 in your calculus, you're going to get 0. And if I put the sine 270, you're going to get minus 1. And sine 360, you get 0 again. And so on, and so on, and so on. And if you put sine 45, you're going to get a value around about here. Okay, so just less than 1. Probably about 2 thirds. But it'll give you some, probably like third if you actually put it in a calculator. So, and there's another lesson on that in terms of exact trig ratios of 30, 45, and 60. So you can have a look at that one. But that is the sine graph, all right? So if anyone asks you to just sketch the sine graph, you consider it starts at zero, zero here, and it then bases up and down, up and down, up and down, and repeats, so a full cycle, all the way up, all the way down, and back to where it started, is 360 degrees, which is, hence this repeats every 360. So again, minus 360, goes to the beginning, and then repeats, and then repeats, and so on, and so on, and so on. All right, so that is your sign graph. So it keeps repeating, and it goes left and right in both directions, okay? So that's your sign graph. Now your cos graph is very similar is very, very similar. And um, the reason it's quite similar is because we're talking about, when we think about cos and it being the adjacent of the hypotenuse, well, the sine was opposite of the hypotenuse, so they both relate to hypotenuse, so they all they, they relatively take a similar kind of pattern. So, like the sine graph, they will also peak at 360. Like the sine graph, they will all have a maximum minimum of 1 and minus 1. So it's going to look almost identical. The only difference is, is where it starts and where it finishes, because the cos starts at 1, rather than at zero all right so let's put the kind of graph together so rather than it being starting here at zero what it's actually going to do is going to start at one all right so when it starts at one it's going to look very much the same it's going to curve down curve back up and so on and so on and so on you'll see that kind of second so it goes down goes back up and so that gives you basically starts at one down through 90 the bottom 180 back through 270 so every 90 degrees it goes through a point or heat to the maximum minimum and then back to the top where it started. All right, so that's your full cycle from top, from top to bottom to top again, the 360. And of course, it will carry on that way all the way along that side. And of course, back the other way. All right, so you can see from there, it looks very, very similar to the sine graph. The only difference being is where it kind of starts. All right, so that's what you've got to learn. All right, and remember, it's got a cycle of 360, so it repeats every 360, and that'll give you an idea of where it needs to go through. And you'll notice I've got the 90, 180, 270, and 360, so I'll split it into four to help that happen. And then it goes up to one and minus one. All right, so there your sine and cos graph are very, very similar. And like I said, the easiest thing to do is just learn these, all right? 
Just re- try and learn them, practice them, keep doing them from time to time, remind yourself which values they go through, and of course your calculator is around to kind of support you in terms of making sure you've got the right values to start with, but ultimately they will expect you to kind of know this in a non-calculator and, and be able to just kind of sketch it, all right? So the sign and cause, okay, they're the easy ones. Now your time one is different, all right? Your time one is a little bit different, um, and it's kind of, kind of unique because this one, um, it doesn't repeat every 360, it actually repeats every 180 degrees, which just makes it a little bit more confusing, and it doesn't take the same shape, all right? Um, and the reason it doesn't take the same shape is, is simply because you're not, we're not dealing with a hypotenuse, we're dealing with opposite and adjacent. And the opposite and adjacent um, can technically be quite different in terms of their values, quite significantly different. When you do one divided by other, well, one is very, very big, and one is very, very small, you're going to have a big answer. And similarly, the way if one is big and the other one, sorry, one is small and the other one is big, then I could end up with a very, very small answer. So what happens is, is that you have what we call an asymptote at 90 degrees. All right. So if you put tan 90 in your calculator, um, it's going to give you zero. All right. Well, you won't give you an answer. Actually, I'll probably say error rather than zero. Forget that. It'll give you an error. All right. Um, so tan x starts at zero, uh, and then at 90 degrees, it basically has an asymptote. All right. So let's have a look. In terms of what we're talking about so what's going to happen is is it's not going to look like the rest and it's going to look like this all right so it looks like this so what happens is is if you, if you consider a value here from from minus 90 this is what we call an asymptote here it will never touch it'll never touch this bit here at all um and then it's going to basically bend towards zero and then it's going to curve back up towards, towards 90 and you're going to have another asymptote there it will never touch and then that shape literally repeats every 180 degrees all right, so between minus 90 and 90, I've got one graph here. So now I'm going to do the same thing, and it's going to go through 180 and look exactly the same thing on, on the right-hand side. So you can see that, it's going to go look exactly the same. So these little dotted lines, and you may come across these, what we call asymptotes, that means you never get a value for it, because it's going to go up and 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 up. And if, if you, I said to you, tan 89.9, it's going to be a very, very, very big value. Um, and it'll never actually get to so, so I suppose you could say it's infinite, which is why you don't get an answer on your calculator. It never never touches this at all, all right? Because it's always going to be 89.9999999999 or something, and it's never really going to get there, all right? Um, and then if you put 90.11190.000001 in here, you're going to get a very, very big negative value. It's going to be down there somewhere, all right? And then I'll carry on um, from that side on the left-hand side as well. So it just kind of repeats over and over. So hopefully you can recognize the pattern from that bit. So it goes through zero is the key thing. And then it has this like 180 degree span, if you want, from minus 90 to 90. Once you've got that bit drawn, then the rest should be okay. Because you think when it starts at zero, well, it must go to 180, it must go 360, it must go through minus 180, and so on, so on and repeats left and right. Okay. So that's the three graphs, the sine, cos, and tan graph. I said it was going to take a little time for you to kind of embed and practice. Um, but of course, if you need to keep looking at it, then go to mathhyperschool.co.uk and of course you can keep coming back to it. Thanks for listening.